Hey everybody, what's going on? <laughs> Recently, I made a TikTok about the things I wish I knew before we got chickens. And I had a lot of questions, comments, concerns on that TikTok video. So I figured I'd just make a more in-depth YouTube video that would uh, help explain and hopefully better prepare somebody else to get chickens. So first, I think I'll give you a little backstory, I guess, on how we got started with chickens. We bought our house almost 11 years ago now, and since we got this place, Amber begged me to get chickens. Um, at first, I told her no. Probably for three or four years, I told her no. Finally, one year, I decided I would get chickens just to make the wife happy. So I brought chickens home. Um, we started with, I think, like 12 chickens. It wasn't long after that, I had a co-worker who also had chickens um, that had a few baby chicks and they offered them to us because it was just too much for them. They were getting out of it, etc. So we took them and then all of a sudden we were up to 20 chickens. That's how chicken math works. It doesn't take long at all. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. But anyways, so Amber and I decided we were going to do chickens. We didn't have any coop. So I did a little bit of research online. I was young. I had no idea what I was doing. And I came to the decision that we were going to go to Menards and buy a cheap $600 metal shed. So that's what we have behind us right here. That's our first chicken coop that we started with. It was a 10 by 12 shed. Um, like I said, I think it was like 600 bucks at the time or something like that, seven years ago. It was absolutely horrible to build and put together. Um, I had a couple buddies come over and it took us like eight hours to do it. And there was probably five or six of us. There might've been a couple beers involved, but needless to say, it was pretty miserable to build. After we built this coop here, we soon realized that this was one of the coops that had the metal uh, sliding doors that open and close. The first thing we realized was those metal sliding doors weren't going to last very long. It lasted, oh gosh, I don't know, maybe till our first winter. And so that's like six months, I'd say. So they lasted about six months. The track constantly got filled with straw, chicken poop, dirt, everything else. And the doors would not open and close easily. They ended up getting bent, falling apart. It was just, it was a mess. So being the broke, oh, I don't know, 24, 25 year old, whatever I was, uh, I just went cheap and we bought some OSB for the front of the coop and we have had that on there since. So that is what we have. So basically half of the coop uh, just has OSB screwed to the front of it. Um, and then the other half is a OSB door that's framed out that opens and closes. It did not take us very long after getting into chickens to really ramp up. We originally wanted to do it just for us. And then somehow out of nowhere, everybody and their brother that we knew um, wanted to buy eggs off of us. So we actually got to one point where we had a lady coming from the Chicago area that wanted to buy 40 dozen eggs a week off of us and we could not supply that. So she would literally come here buy every egg that we could offer for the time. And then she would take them back to Chicago and give them to her family and everybody else. So during that time period, we weren't even able, able to eat our own eggs. We were buying store-bought eggs to eat and we were selling everything that we had. So we decided at that point we needed to ramp up, get a few more chickens. We figured out right away we were gonna have to build another coop because this metal coop here was not gonna be big enough. So. I started building this, it's a eight by eight um, wood frame chicken coop. It's got a shingled roof on it. I put it right next to this steel coop um, and I attached it with a tunnel. So I just cut a hole in the side of each tunnel or in the side of each coop and I connected it with that plywood. That way the chickens had access to run back and forth in between the two coops. 
So that also didn't take very long to realize that that was a mistake because what was happening is the chickens were going in between the two coops. They would go in the tunnel and they would lay eggs in there. That was miserable to try and climb in there and get the eggs out. Okay, so that's a little backstory on, you know, our progress with chickens and everything. Um, I could go way more in depth, but it's not really worth it. I think the very first thing that I realized um, getting into chickens, well, I guess I wouldn't say it was the very first thing. It's something that I am very um, stuck on now. So chicken poop is hard to clean out of the floors. Um, we originally put OSB floors down in these coops and that was a mistake, didn't last. Um, like I said, I was a young kid, uh, didn't have much money and I didn't really know any better. So the floors in this original metal coop here, oh, here we go. Okay. So the floors in this original metal coop here, um, they have been replaced, I think five times. So originally we did just OSB floor. And then when we replaced it, we ripped all that rotten OSB floor out and we put another OSB floor in, but this time it was three quarter instead of half inch. And we tried something that I saw on YouTube. We put the cheapest linoleum that we could get from Menards down on the floor to make it, um, to make it easier to clean and that that worked it helped a little bit it lasted probably i don't know a year and a half longer than the other stuff um but eventually scraping a shovel over it and everything that stuff rips up too and then the floor rotted out and we had to replace it again and again and again so this last time we replaced the floor was 2020 i believe so two years almost three years ago maybe and we went with uh, pressure treated half inch plywood this time, which this stuff is still holding up. I mean, it's holding up really well. We have not had any problems with this. Well, I mean a little bit, it's kind of peeled off of the, um, it's kind of peeled off the floor joists and everything in some spots. So it's a little wavy, but as far as rotting out, this has not rotted out on us yet. If I could go back and change it, which, Amber and I are planning on doing in the future. I want to build one chicken coop that's big enough to house all of our chickens further away from our house because I put them way too close to the house um, and we've had to deal with all of that for the last seven years. Um, actually ended up putting a little fence that is 16 feet off the back of our house just to keep the chickens from coming up to the door, pooping on the porch and all of that. Um, so with that being said, I would build one coop that was big enough for all the chickens. Um, the most important thing, in my opinion, is... <laughs> Sorry, I gotta crouch down. Okay, so the most important thing, in my opinion, is concrete floors. Uh, they... I, I want a coop that has doors that are... that swing open wide. I can pull my tractor right up to it, easily scrape the concrete, get all the poop up, and not have to throw my back out every time I'm cleaning the coop. Um, I had a lot of comments on the TikTok video basically saying, one, use linoleum. Okay, we've been there, we've done it, we've tried it. It helped a little bit, but it's still not the answer for us. Um, another problem was we had plenty of people telling us concrete floors are bad for the chickens. They're meant to be on dirt, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, chickens are meant to be on dirt, but number one, they're only in the coops at night when they roost um or if they're laying eggs in the nesting box number two we will still put straw down on top of the concrete it's just the concrete is just there as a base to make it easier to clean so that is the most important thing uh for me anyways is when we build our new coop it is going to have concrete floors okay the second thing that i think is really important um you gotta make the coop tall enough that you can walk in it without having to bend over and stress your back. Uh, so, I don't know if you can see, but this metal shed, the coop is not, it's not tall enough for me. I hit my head on it, I've gotta bend over. It's just miserable to clean. Another problem that we had, so we ended up having to 
kind of frame this out with two by fours. Um, again, young, 25 year old, 24 year old kid, whatever, had no idea what I was doing. I wouldn't do it this way again. And I've learned a lot about construction over the last several years. So um, anyways, problem that we have with this, uh, the bottom of the metal all the way around the perimeter of the coop is rusting out. So you can see all the way there, those are some really big holes there on the back of the coop. Sorry that there's poop everywhere. This is nothing's glamorous about living on a homestead, but yeah. So the metal got super weak. I ended up having to just temporarily cheaply, I screwed some OSB down. I just screwed some OSB down that I had um, to cover the holes. Like I said, I'm hoping in the next year or so that we just build one coop, like a 16 by 16. It's big enough to house all our chickens. So our original roofs, basically what they were was they probably sat about waist high, like this height right here. And they came out in a rectangle fashion off of the wall. There was a leg that came down here and that went over to this wall right here. And then I put a couple of extra going across, a couple extra two by fours going across for the chickens to roost on. So what I figured out was it wasn't enough roosts for all the chickens that we wound up with. It was really hard to clean underneath those roosts. So uh, somewhere along the line, I don't remember exactly when, but I saw somebody else's design and they had roosts that were able to, they were able to lift the roosts up to the ceiling. And that's what I did. So I basically, I took, I took these wooden roosts and I put them on a hinge system. So there's like I basically just drilled out a big hole in these two by fours and then I ran a smaller bolt through them so that way the roost can be easily lifted up like this. So what I do is, so I come in here, oh, there's a chicken getting ready to lay on the floor over here. I come in here, I lift these roosts all the way up. Yeah. Put that board underneath it and now it's able to hold it up but i don't know if you can tell again i have to constantly be hunched over in here because this coop is not tall enough um, and i've got a bad back and it's just it sucks to clean so we have gone through probably i don't know at least five or six different nesting box designs that we've tried um pretty much what we wound up with for a long time. We took milk crates, so we cut the front out of the milk crates and I just had them screwed to the wall. That worked. Uh, there was nothing really wrong with that, but the chickens would sleep in it and they would poop. They would poop in there while they slept and the eggs were just always nasty. So we still have problems with the chickens sleeping in our nesting boxes or trying to, but we got new, well, new to us, metal rollout nesting boxes so these are the boxes here and what happens is i don't know if you can see but this is a fake egg um so the chicken goes inside here lays their egg and it rolls down to rolls down there to the bottom of the nesting box that way they don't get pooped on and everything when we got those though I took our milk crate system because the chickens still wanted to lay in the milk crates all the time. So I took our milk crate system and I put it on the outside of the coop. So during the summer, uh, they do go and lay in there quite often. So another thing that I would make sure that you have on your chicken coops when you go to build something is uh, ventilation. You need proper ventilation. Um, Otherwise it gets way too hot in the summer, way too cold in the winter. I ran electric to mine. Uh, actually I was, I think I was a first year apprentice when we got into these chickens. Um, and so I ended up with the help of my father, another first year apprentice and another electrician that I worked with. Uh, I ran power uh, from my garage panel underground and it actually came into the side here 
of this first coupe. We're not using it, anyways, like I said earlier, we're not using this coupe right now because we're getting ready to put baby chicks in it. Um, there is one hole in the floor I gotta fix real quick uh, before we move them out here. But, yes. Okay, so you can see right, uh, right there. You can see the electric came through there, went to a box up here on the ceiling for light. We've got a light switch in this coupe and a GFI receptacle so we can plug heat lamps in here and stuff like that in the winter time when we have baby chicks coming. Um, and then it, Hillbilly Deluxe went right there, PVC in between the two coupes. And that came over into this coupe. Uh, right into a GFI receptacle right there and another light on the ceiling so we can see out here but yeah so I guess those are like the main most important things that I would take into consideration when building your coop don't use wood wood rots out for the floor either do a dirt floor or a concrete floor um, don't get these cheap metal sheds from Menards. The doors on them suck. They end up rusting out eventually. It's just, it is not made to be a chicken coop. I guess if you have one already on hand and you're hurting for money or it's just free and it's there for you to use, yeah, sure, go ahead and use it. But eventually down the road, you're gonna wanna do something different. I know I do. You can see when I'm cleaning these floors, how annoying it is, how far I have to bend down just to clean this crap up. This actually isn't bad because I just cleaned it out a week ago. But when I made that TikTok video a few weeks ago, it was the first time I was able to clean the coop out pretty much in like two months because we're in Northwest Indiana and poop freezes. It is not easy to clean up when it's frozen. So it just sits there until the first nice spring day and then you're able to come out here and scrape it up. So this isn't bad, but it's still not a comfortable position to do the scraping and cleaning. I just dumped that chicken poop that is our pig pen um, we just have a chicken poop compost pile going on there um, we get pigs in another month and a half so pretty soon as soon as the weather breaks here I will be pulling all that uh, chicken manure out of there and I will be spreading it over the multiple gardens that Amber has and tilling it in so I don't know if you can believe it but up until 
this past June when I got this tractor like oh eight months ago now we did everything here by hand uh, that meant shoveling all the poop into a wheelbarrow wheelbarrowing the poop to where it needed to go dumping it uh, we d cleaned out our pig pen every year with shovels it was not I mean we literally would take wheelbarrows and wheelbarrows of pig material out of that pig pen like a week before we got new pigs and we would take it and spread it on the property where we needed either fill or uh, some kind of a compost for our garden or whatever but everything was done by hand this tractor is literally a lifesaver and a back saver Okay, real quick, here is our coop setup and overview. So now that it's all clean, there is the nesting boxes, which most of the time the girls like to lay on the floor still. Um, believe it or not, you can fit probably about 75 chickens on these roosts here. Like I said, they are on this hinge system. And then you come over, there's the tunnel that connects them, but we have them blocked off so that the birds can't go back and forth. Come over into this coop, and that's the hole in the floor I gotta fix before we put the baby chicks in here. Um, but this one's been cleaned out here for a little bit. This one is also on a hinge system, so you can pick it up clean underneath it, put it back down. Window for ventilation, and this is the light switch that controls the lights for both sides of the coop. Boom. And there is the tunnel there on this side. Like I said, we don't have it so that the chickens can go back and forth between there right now because we are gonna be putting baby chicks out here in a few weeks. So I know I rambled a lot in this video, and uh, I don't know might be annoying to watch for some of you guys but i hope that out of all of this i just help a couple of people um, decide not to make the same mistakes that i made at least if you do make the same mistakes i made uh you were warned and you knew what you were getting into the here is a quick update and video on the baby chicks couple turkeys couple guinea hens that we have that will be moving out to that eight by eight coop soon they are all doing well Northwest Indiana just finished cleaning the coops and it is snowing its butt off again.